Let's start chapter 17. Chapter 17 is on more acid-base equilibrium type stuff. In chapter 17, we're going to start off talking about buffers. And in order for us to be able to understand buffers, we need to first understand something called the common ion effect. So in this section, 17.1, I'm just going to be describing to you exactly what the common ion effect is. We're going to define the common ion effect as being a shift in equilibrium. Remember, we've talked about this for a while now, uh, position of equilibrium, shifting to the left or shifting to the right, Le Chatelier's principal thing. A shift in equilibrium that is due to the addition of what we're going to call a common ion. Common, not as in everyday, regular, but common as in having something in common with something else. So here's the example that I'm going to use. HCN plus H2O in equilibrium with CN minus plus H3O plus. And this is just a standard acid base equilibrium reaction where HCN is the acid reacting with water, making cyanide CN minus and H3O plus. If we add cyanide CN minus, so maybe we're adding it as NaCN, or maybe we're adding it as KCN. There's got to be some kind of cation in there. But the important part is if we're adding this, a cyanide ion, a source of cyanide ion, to this particular equilibrium, if we add cyanide, the amount of cyanide will go up, it will increase because we are adding cyanide to the solution. So this quantity will increase and this will cause the position of equilibrium to shift to try to deal with that extra cyanide that we've added. Remember, if we increase the concentration of something, the position of equilibrium shifts away, in this case, to the left, to try to use up the cyanide that we added. So the position of equilibrium is going to shift to the left. And when the position of equilibrium shifts to the left, the concentration of everything is going to change. The concentration of HCN uh, and not water because we don't include water. The concentration of HCN goes up because the position of equilibrium has shifted to the left. And this is going to cause the concentration of H3O plus to go down. Again, because the position of equilibrium is shifting to the left. So we're making more HCN and we're using up H3O plus in order to make, make that happen. And when H3O plus goes down, this is going to cause the solution to become less acidic, more basic. The pH will go up. So all of that thinking that we just did um, boils down to if we add cyanide to this particular solution, the pH of the solution is going to go up. It's going to cause the pH of the solution to go up. So what we'd like to be able to do is easily calculate, like if I add a gram of cyanide, how much is that going to change the pH of the solution? Can I quickly calculate the pH of the solution? if I added some extra common ion, an ion adding an ion that is also present in this equilibrium system. So let's derive a way for us to quickly calculate the pH. 
after we add a common ion. So as you know, for, for this HCN reaction, we can write an equilibrium expression, products, cyanide, times H3O plus over the reactant, HCN. We can write that uh, equilibrium expression for that particular reaction. And we can rearrange that mathematical equation. So now it says Ka times HCN equals Cn minus times H3O plus. So I'm just doing algebra. Because if we want to calculate the pH of a solution, what we really need to know is the H3O plus concentration. That's what we're gonna use to calculate pH. So I'm gonna rearrange the equation again So all that I did here was divide both sides by cyanide, divide both sides by cyanide, and um, isolate H3O plus in the equation and rewrite it. So all I've done there is just rewrite the Ka equation. Because like I said, and as you know, if we wanna calculate the pH of a solution, we need to take the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. And for the, this particular system, the H3O plus concentration can be determined by Ka times HCN over CN minus. So let's just take that, what I just highlighted in yellow, and let's plug that in for H3O plus. So again, all that I have done is just said I'm going to use I'm going to use this term right here which is equal to H3O plus and I'm going to plug it into the pH equation right there. Now what I'm going to do next is use some properties of logs to simplify this equation that we've come up with. What we've come up with now is the pH is the negative log of Ka I'm gonna kind of spread out the Ka from the, from the molecules. Ka times HCN over CN minus. So one property of logs is if you have the log of A times B, mathematically that's equal to the log of A plus the log of B. And so I'm gonna use that property of logs right now to separate the right side of the equation. So I'm gonna get negative log of Ka plus the negative log of HCN over CN minus, I don't know what happened to my carbon there, CN minus, and that this plus sign here is useless, so I'm gonna just erase it. So now we have got this, this is our equation, this is where we're at right now. Now I'm going to, we've, we've done this once before and I'm gonna remind you that the negative log of Ka is referred to as pKa, just like the negative log of H3O plus is pH or the negative log of OH minus is pOH. So that's just a definition that we have. So I'm gonna rewrite this equation again using that definition. Instead of saying negative log of Ka, I'm going to say pKa minus the log of HCN over CN minus. Now let's just remind ourselves why we're even doing all of this. This is beautiful math. Why are we even doing it? We're trying to come up with a fast way to calculate the pH of a solution if we've added some cyanide into it or some sort of common ion. So we're gonna clean this equation up one more time. We're almost done. We're gonna use another property of logs. And so this property says if you have the log of A over B, that is equal to the negative log of B over A. What we have right now is a negative log and chemists don't like tricky math like subtraction. So what we're gonna do is turn that into a plus log 
by flipping the numerator and the denominator. So this is what we've ended up with. If we wanted to calculate the pH of this solution, we would just need to look up the pKa, which is in a data table somewhere. We would need to know the concentration of cyanide ion that we added, and we'd also need to know the concentration of HCN that we started with. And then there we go, we'd be able to very quickly calculate the pH of the solution. What I'd like to do is make this equation, because this is very useful, I'd like to make this equation generic so that we can apply it to anything, not just the HCN reaction pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of whatever our base is divided by whatever our acid is in a chemical reaction. Because if we go back up to the original reaction, HCN and H2O make CN minus and H3O plus, in this reaction, the HCN was the acid and the water was the base, and the cyanide was the conjugate base, and the H3O plus was the conjugate acid. So what we ended up with in that equation that we just derived, we ended up with the acid and the conjugate base. So I'm gonna substitute in just base and acid, and we've come up with a generic reaction that we can use to calculate the pH of any solution that has a common ion added to it, and this equation is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch 